Hello, and this is Welcome to Pickle Up Gaming. This is the second bonus video that I've decided to make <coughs> outside of the release schedule. Uh, the first review is going to be coming out this Sunday, and I know the last video, the first Thursday miscellaneous content video, was a little weird in the way it was. It was me just bitching about how Shigeru Miyamoto, Miyamoto is just doing weird stuff and whatever. But anyway, um, today we'll be discussing how the original PlayStation 1 games look like this, and then how out of the blue they sort of became like this, and this is how most people remember, or if not all people remember, how PlayStation 1 games look like. They came in a standard plastic CD jewel case that opens up with the disc, the manual, and the back artwork, of course. But how did it became like this? So early 90s, the early 90s was sort of the beginnings of gaming's transition from from hardware from from cartridge based how from cartridges to optical media so back in the day cartridges came on cartridges in the game and the cartridges were basically a small circuit board with like a rom chip and a, other ancillary chips like memory mappers ex, extra ram extra sound chips Stuff like that, and starting with the TurboGrafx CD, and then followed by the Sega CD, the 3DO, and I don't want to count this because it was originally meant as a multimedia device and not a ga gaming machine, but ended up becoming a gaming machine because they were high as fuck, knowing that this is, you know, the Netherlands. Um, Philips, the Philips CDI, um... And the, then all the CD game-related consoles sort of had their own way of storing the discs. The 3DO, for example, had these big, tall boxes in which the games were in a little case inside the big box. In fact, the boxes were taller than standard game boxes. The Jaguar CD, I think, had sort of a CD jewel case, but it wasn't standard. Um, Sega, Sega had a standard... CD jewel case. This is for the Sega CD Lunar the Silver Star, and this was the standard Sega optical disc case through the Sega CD's life, through the Saturn's life, and was somehow not used for the Dreamcast, but I think that was just how Sega was just trying to rebrand itself for the modern era, only for it to get steamrolled. So, Sony was no different. When the PlayStation 1 first came out, they were in these sort of jewel cases. This is Jumping Flash, and this is a completely plastic case. The CD's in there, the artwork is in here, this doesn't have the manual. It still has cool shit on the inside. Um, all the labels are sort of like this weird card, card stock sort of thing that's just sort of glued on. So. Sony, when it came out, Sony, when the Sony PlayStation came out, it sold gangbusters. And the problem was, so many people were buying this stuff up, that Sony needed to figure out a way to cut the cut costs to ease produ production, so that way they can make more cases. Because CDs, you can mass produce them. In fact, that's why optical media sort of beat out cartridges in the end. They were cheap to manufacture, and for the relative relative price to amount of data, it was high, so you could make bigger games for cheaper cost. However, the problem was these cases. This was an old plastic case, so it took time and took care to manufacture. So Sony needed had pretty much the same problem as Russia had with their T-34s. They needed to cut costs, cut down production time, and increase quantity. So they went from this to cardboard. So this is a completely cardboard long box PlayStation case. And, you know, the game is on the inside. 
here's the manual. Sort of a felt inside. It's the CD is in a plastic little case area that is sort of hot glued to the uh, back of the case. And the reason that I know it's hot glued is because I own a copy of a, a long box copy of Wipeout, and this little plastic thing had fallen off. So anyway, still, Sony was selling a lot, and even with cheaper cases, with easier to manufacture cases, they were still running low on supply. So they called up, and I'm not kidding, this actually happened. Sony called Sega, and they were like, <clears throat> they were like, can we have some extra cases, please? And they're like, sure. So they bought cases from Sega, and here is a pl completely plastic, once again, but this time clear plastic, has a weird black plastic case. It's all sort of clear. The reason it's like this is because this is the exact same cases Sega was using for the Sega CD and Saturn. Now, to show you, for example, here is Lunar the Silver Star. Here is the manual. It goes in the same place. The CD is in the same area. Now, the reason why the CD is not in this is because it's still in the Sega CD downstairs. And, by the way, in a few weeks there's going to be a video coming out about how I demonstrate the Sega CD, so that's why it's in there. That won't be coming out for a few weeks, so hold your horses. So, say, so Sony was, you know, all good in the hood. They were using Sega's cases, but then a separate problem came up, and that wasn't the problems of meeting demand, but shelf space. You see, a lot of third-party developers were working with Sony, and thus lots more games were coming out on the PlayStation, which meant, like, this, like, this sort of packaging is fine if there's like like 5 15 50 games but god forbid there's 500 games you obviously don't have the shelf space for all these games you don't have the sort of area to store this so sony went standard and went with these jewel cases these are standard mass-produced cd cases in fact these are these sort of cases are still used to this day for CDs, albeit why you would buy a CD in 2020 is beyond me, but hey, some people still buy vinyl, some people still buy cassette. I am not here to yuck their yum. I do me, they do, you do you. So, like I demonstrated earlier, if I could just get this guy open, manual, you know, the bits to it. That's essentially how that happened. So it was a tale of, so how the Sony PlayStation 1 packaging was sort of just a history of Sony trying to cut costs, speed up manufacture time, but in the end realized, oh, these take up a lot of space. In fact, here is, well, I'm going to use the Destruction Derby case because it looks a lot nicer and communicates the same amount of information. This, the standard CD jewel case, is about maybe three-fourths the size, three-fifths the size of the long box. That and they're thinner than the long box, I mean you can stack them, and they're thinner, they're shorter, they're about the same, slightly, you know, less width to them. So you can fit a lot more of these on a shelf and thus be able to display more games and, you know, the all important whatever. But then as Sony went, once the PS2 era came along, everybody started using, because everybody was using DVDs anyway and DVD standard standard DVD jewel cases kind of, you know, <coughs> they were cheaper to manufacture because, you know, it's just a cheaper dyed plastic as opposed to the transparent, brittle plastic they were using. I swear to God, those things are like made out of Bakelite. 
Um, this is more of a standard design, you know. Manual goes here, discs go here. Um, and everybody's stores use the same standard plastic case, like the Xbox. The Xbox used the same sort of plastic case. Uh, the GameCube is the same plastic case, but a different size, but obviously proprietary, with proprietary differences due to the size of GameCube discs. Um, and everybody sort of used the same sort of design of dual case. Sure, as generations come, like the PS3, the PS3 had a combina had transparent bits. The Xbox 360 used like a dyed plastic. Um, the Wii used white cases, sometimes red. But by and large, they're all the same. Anyway, this is another Lindy Beige-esque look into gaming history. Please leave a like and uh, leave a meatball sub, and I will get back to you later.